Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Uh, I'll call the public hearing for the budget of Dort County, November 12th to order. Uh, that again. They can't hear. They can't hear you. Get your microphone. Move your microphone. Yeah, Talking. We've mic. called the order of the public hearing. Um, I'm missing something. I'd like to have a roll call. Mark is asleep. No, I'm pushing. You can hear the things to sleep. He's got Leo's. So. I got Leo's. <laughs> oh, there you go. There we go. Hit the right button finally. Yeah. Well, it's not confirming, so. Please there we go. This to, this to It'll be a long day if we got to do this every time. We don't have that many to do. Maybe we. Uh, have some we memories. have 20 present, one excused <laughs> absent, which is Leo. Um, a motion to uh, adopt the agenda. So moved. Motion Second. by Mark, seconded by Charles. All in favor say aye. 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 Normally what we have is an uh, open hearing for people to come forward to speak. And I read a nine part reason on how to speak or what to say and how to say it or not to how to say it, but what to say. Since nobody wants to speak and uh, nobody's filled out a card, I only have one card the uh, person filled out and uh, it's uh, John, John Condra, and uh, he did not wish to speak, but he wanted to say that he was in favor of the budget. So I'll just ask, is there anybody that wants to speak right now at the public hearing about the budget, even though you haven't filled the card out? Going once, going twice. Um, I'll declare the public hearing over, since there's no public comment. A motion to adjourn. I'll move. Second. Second. Got it. I don't know who David Angle and Kathy Schultz. I can't. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So the public hearing is closed. <coughs> so now, call the county board into session and rise to say the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call. Uh, everybody push the right buttons again. Mark, it's the green one. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Just needed some warming up. It went right through this time. Batteries must be getting low. I don't know. <clears throat> That's what I did. I whacked. I did it I it's 20, yes, uh, one absent. Um, a motion to present the agenda. So moved. Mark second. Miller, Biz Verley, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, in correspondence, I'm going to move one item on, around on the agenda um, right after correspondence. Is, the only correspondence we have is the uh, um, unassigned fund balance. Has anybody got any questions? I'm going to move uh, resolution 2014-91. And take care of that first before we adjourn into the county board and reconvene as a budget. And we'll discuss that. Um, David, you want to explain that? Make a motion and second it and yeah. get a second and explain it? Yeah, I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 40, 2014, 2014 91 authorization to proceed with fiber optic project. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Chuck. Um, Tim Allen is in the back. You can probably do a better job of explaining it. But the opportunity did arise for us to. Uh, connect throughout the county all of our emergency services towers 
be a fiber optic using Insight and Cellcom. And um, this is the project layout through three, through three years, the agreement was, in order to do that connection between the towers as a primary connection rather than the wireless that we're currently using. Okay. Tim is here. Tim, you want to come forward and explain a little further? Thanks for having me. Um, again, if you recall your county board meeting in either June or July, I can't remember the actual one, but we had Lee Thibodeau and Bruce Rowell up here and we went through the uh, public safety uh, fiber optic project with you, uh, did a presentation as to what that would mean. In essence, um, we're looking at running six strands of dark fiber to each of our public safety sites that are on the mainland. So Chambers Island and Washington Island, which also hold towers, we aren't looking at. So in the south, that's our new Mill Road Tower and Andres Tower and Brussels Hill. And of course the public safety building, our Justice Center. On the north side of the bay, uh, this facility would be interconnected to Sunny Slope. And Sunny Slope would have Jackson Port, Fish Creek, uh, Bailey's Harbor, and Ellison Bay connected to it, as well as the EMS Sister Bay Fire Station. Okay. Late in the game, we asked if the school districts of Gibraltar, Sevastopol, and Southern Door wanted to be a part of this. And Shirley and I had asked that the school districts give us notification whether or not they wanted to be a part of the project. Thus far, Southern Door and Sevastopol have said that they want to go forward with this project as well. So what we're here at today um, is with this project, uh, the breakdown is basically 1.25 million in 20. 15, 750,000 in 2016, and 500,000 in 2017 would be the payment schedule. And at this point, the southern areas or southern door is basically Ensight has most of their fiber already run. We expect, and in talking to Lee Thibodeau, he expects that he'll be able to probably hook up both Brussels Hill and Sunny Slope in the first year. And again, these are our collapse points for those areas in the south, Brussels Hill, those areas in the north is Sunny Slope. He also believes that even in the first year he can also get Southern Door and Sevastopol hooked up. So uh, we'd really like to move forward with this project. It would really enhance our public safety communications for the future um, and also give us connectivity to the north to our second largest community in Sister Bay. Um, that's kind of the basics of it and as short as I can make it. <laughs> Go ahead, David. I guess I just want to point out for those of us that have short memories, like myself, that in July we approved this as part of the CIP project for this year. And we had not sent it to, we asked finance to determine how it would be funded at some point in time. And so this resolution is reaffirming the approval and it will then go to finance from here for finance to determine how it would be paid for over the next three years. That's why we're actually, that's one of the reasons this resolution is before us right now is that if we were to pass the budget the way it is, it would have been sort of, I won't say hidden, but it would have been in the budget and most people wouldn't have realized it was in the budget that there's the opportunity <coughs> to spend this much money and we wanted to make sure everybody was aware of it, that this is in the budget, that it's coming, how it's funded is up for discussion, but that's why I jumped it ahead of the budget so everybody understands that. 2.5 million it is or something? Correct. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Chuck. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to jump the gun on uh, the Door County Economic Development Corporation, but Kathy and I were at a meeting the other day, and uh, there's so much interest in this right now that places like public service can't even keep up with uh, running wires and uh, when somebody comes in and says, uh, we're looking to have something done, they're going, you're, you're going to be a ways out. And I think that they figured that this total project could uh, possibly bring in about 160 jobs. Okay. So, and uh, hopefully it would open up the door for some really good paying <coughs> jobs coming into the county where we'd have the, the dark fiber connection. Okay, good. Anybody else? <coughs> John? Well, are we, are we passing this and don't know how it's being funded? 
Uh, if, you, yeah. if you take well, a look at the resolution, and, um, and now I'll put Shirley under the gun. If you take a look at your fiscal impact section of the resolution, <laughs> you have options. Um, if you take a look at the little fiscal impact section, I don't have it in front of me, but if you read that section on the resolution, if I could have Grant read that, possibly just verbatim. Okay. Uh, three options available to you are to borrow for the three-year project, transfer from fund balance the amount needed each year, or transfer from fund balance the first year and budget in the CIP for 2016 and 2017. And at the committee level, we are looking at the third option. What's the third option? That one being that we would uh, transfer the money at this time for the first year, 2015, and then the CIP for the remaining two years. Okay. You're correct in that statement, John, but they do have a three or four, three roads to go. They haven't chosen which road to go down. I put it in highway department terms. Well, I... I I'm tired to vote yes when I don't know what you're doing and where the money's coming from. The options are out there, the three that you Well, just we don't said. know which option we're going to use if we pass this, do we? No, not until next, uh, so then my question David is can maybe answer that. What, we don't know what we're using, what money. Right, so it was, that was, when we passed the CIP, we also didn't know, we, we also didn't have the final numbers, and at one point in time we were thinking that it was all going to happen in one year. So now it's been split over a three-year period of time, so we ask that it we go ahead and authorize the resolution as separate from the budget, so it was different than what was in the budget package, so that the finance would have another swipe at how it could best be funded, which one of the three options, and it would come back to the, to the board for their final approval at probably next month's meeting. Ken. Well, I guess I don't understand either. Uh, if it's going to be taken care of next year, we're passing next year's budget today, those dollars should be accounted for today, shouldn't they? Why would we wait until next month or later on? I mean, am, I, am I missing something here? I'm just, I mean, because well, you're when, talking how, I, how many hundreds of thousands of dollars that are going to be spent next within, year, within that's the, a budget amount, whether it's CIP the, or not. Within the budget package, in the budget package that was sent out, it shows it as a borrow. Yes. Okay. And finance had not had that discussion and approved it as a borrow. Yeah. So when the issue came up, how were we going to pay for it? And within the budget package, it says borrowing, we haven't agreed to that yet. So we wanted to come up with what the options were. But the total dollar amount is still within. The but according to the budget, we are borrowing $2.5 if I read the budget right. That's correct. And this resolution, so we, this resolution would change. Here comes Shirley. It will. This Passing it this way will change that. Definitely. There won't, it won't come back that we're borrowing the money. I guess, I, I, I think the answer might be that it, if it passes, borrowing is, the, in my opinion, the worst scenario, and if we can do it without borrowing money, that's the way they're going to try to do it. And that's basically the direction that we were heading also, no CIP-based, no borrowing at all. But right. this is shown as the worst-case scenario, so it's in the budget at this time as the possibility of being in the worst-case scenario. When we go through the budget, then we'll decide at that time how we want to accomplish the project. But finance wouldn't have the right to just make that decision. That would have if to come back to the county board, board, board That's for, correct. for That's final correct. approval. It but come back in December. In other words, we're okaying it in, in concept right now. That is correct, Mr. Fisher. If we can't decide on how we're going to fund it, it goes away? No. 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 That's why we're making that decision today. Because they have to commit the project to the end of the year, even though it's a three-year project. Right. We might and be site, able to pay yeah. for it over three years. We might be able to pay for it in one year. We're leaving those options open for us to make the decision. I believe I understand now, Mr. Chairman. Thank okay. you. Is there any other questions? We'll go to the voter board and uh, vote it up or vote it down. My batteries are going bad. That is passed on 20 yes with one absent. Uh, we're going to adjourn the county board and convene in the annual budget session. Um,
Shirley and David, do you, should we vacate these two seats and let them come? I think we should. We'll, we'll vacate these two seats and Shirley and David can come to the front and answer all your questions. <laughs> you could practice. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I do you want to pull more fast? Motion to adjourn and uh, reconvene. Yeah. So motion to adjourn. Second by second. John Cook. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> That's passed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I get this way in the back. Make a motion. That's very close to a year and a half. Well, what an auspicious group out here. <laughs> All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Before us, of course, is the 2015 budget that you've all had a chance to go through with a fine-tooth comb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Each and every one of you had many, many months to look at this and prepare for it. You've all had it in your various oversight committees, <clears throat> taking different uh, swipes at it. Uh, Shirley and I wanted to, as part of the Finance Committee, we wanted to thank all the department heads. We want to thank administration. We want to thank each one of you <coughs> supervisors individually for all your time and efforts that you have put in on the budget this year. There were six major, major considerations that went into the Finance Committee decision to move the budget forward at a 3.83% tax levy increase over 2014, which equates to a 16 cent increase in the tax rate for 2015. Uh, the equalized value is a major portion of the tax rate calculation, which decreased for the fifth consecutive year. Uh, the budget year decrease amounted to 0.40%. The 2014 budget year had a decrease of 1.72%, so it appears to be leveling off a little bit. The 2015 budget equalized value decrease was $28 million, um, $28 million plus change. It's the lowest decrease in the last five years, thankfully. There were six considerations. The Door County will use its levy capacity of $23,603,237 to the fullest. $322,991 will come from the Workman's Compensation Fund to offset the calculated department expenses for 2015. $250,000 proposed jurisdictional transfer of the DK funds will not be used, so the DK fund will remain whole. The County Roads and Bridges budget was reduced by $188,812 from proposed construction of a road segment. The increase in emergency service budget includes the hiring of six paramedics or the staffing of an additional crew. This is the third year of a 0% levy cap uh, or net new construction from the state. The county's levy capacity based upon net new construction is 23591837 The net new construction in Door County is 0.632%, which equates to a possible $148,164 increase in levy dollars over 2014. Uh, we also had debt service payments for 2015 that increased by $11,400. The two of them added together will give us the allowable levy limit of the $23,603,237 for 2015. Um, the $322,991 used for workman's compensation fund was calculated against department expenses, as we mentioned. Uh, the Finance Committee at a September meeting recommended the CIP be amended for 2015. Uh, that's where we recommended the 250,000 ju jurisdictional transfer uh, not be used as an offset. Um, at the October 6th Finance Committee meeting, um, the committee removed one mile of proposed road construction um, for 188,812 reduction to the budget. We had also mentioned the ambulance portion of the Emergency Management Services Department is exempt from the tax levy cap, as is the budget for the bridge aid. The budget increased by 43.55%. Over 2014, <coughs> the proposed hiring of six paramedics accounted for $540,864. <coughs> the non-capital outlay for the paramedics uh, accounted for another $164,000 increase to purchase such things as cardiac monitors, IV pumps, ventilators, um, cots, etc. So the total EMS tax levy for 2015 is $2,678,019 which is $812,481 over 2014 tax levy. When the exempt ambulance and bridge aids are added to the tax base, the total levy proposed for 2015 comes back to the $26,305,294 or the 3.83% over 2014's tax levy. 
The recommended budget also preserves the unassigned fund balance. We did not uh, take any unassigned fund balance money and transfer um, to try and cover off any departmental expenses, so it keeps Thor County in a healthy state. And other than the use of the fund balance for some drastic program reductions and or employee cuts, the only other option we would have to fund some of our um, capital was to borrow. Uh, keep in mind that the county cannot borrow for operating the county. The only borrowing we can do is for capital types of projects or construction projects as outlined within the adopted CIP. That results in the net tax rate for 2015 of the 3.8180. 44803, since the state requires that the rate is carried out to nine decimal places. The tax rate increase for the 2015 budget is 0.1558336, or 16 cents per thousand dollars of its assessed valuation. Um, the equalized value decreased um, again in, uh, in for 2015 by the 0 0.4 percent, 0.04 percent. Uh, that does have a direct effect on our tax rate, as you know. Uh, even if the propose that the tax, even if we propose that the tax levy go down, the tax rate could still be higher than the previous year because of any decrease in equalized value. With the continued changes at the state level, there's uncertainty as to what will be handed down by the state of Wisconsin going forward, especially since the recent election. So we, as a county, need to continue to look toward the future when adopting the budget for 2015 and be aware of the effects of their decisions and how it will affect us as a county and services we have to provide. I would like to personally thank, the committee would like to personally thank Shirley and her department for all your hard work, Shirley. So we appreciate it. And once again, uh, all the department heads and administration within the county. <coughs> We're open for questions. Hearing none. And I came with answers. <laughs> she had an answer sheet here, too. Yeah. So why don't you give us your answers for the questions you thought you were going see to get. You, okay. See if you can come up with the questions. Right? I think Ken has a question. Mr. Fisher. Where is our undesignated fund on here? It's right in the beginning. Is that in, in your beginning? Yeah. It's in the first page of the county board packet. Okay. Let me go to that one then. Did you have a question in regards to that? Yes, where are we as a, let me, let me get it up here. Where, oh, there I got it. Uh, are we over, we're not taking anything out of there for budget purposes this year? That's correct. Correct. We have each of the prior two years. Yes. And we stay, what, uh, uh, we are almost a million over the 15%. Yes, that is correct. Keep in mind that we have not closed out 2014, and that's Understand. when the Understand. amount changes. And you took 188000 from the highway for a mile of road? That is correct. That was uh, Mr. Kologi's suggestion at the very beginning of the budget process. Well, let's be honest here. That wasn't his suggestion. It was him playing nice with others. And, and willing to go along. It puts us under what we need to do to mm -hmm. maintain our 20-year program of maintaining the roads. Are we saving, and am I not even allowed to, is there something clandestine going on here, Mr. Chairman, that we're saving this money? We're, we're a million over. Why don't we take 188000 so we keep pace with our paving project? I guess. Are you saving that money for a building project that you've got in mind that you're not telling us about? <laughs> Come on now. Well, I think you just passed a resolution that might yeah. be why you're saving that money. That that's the way they might head to that uh, fund to stop us from having to borrow money to do the fiber optic. I think that's a fair. That is. That that's what they're trying to do. But they're leaving their options open, and I think John Kologi did answer that question that. I think he said he had enough work and he was satisfied with that amount of highways that stay within that 17 miles per road. And I think you guys agreed on the highway committee. Well, you're wearing a different hat now, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> when you were on the highway committee and when you were chairman of it, you sang a different song. You protected that schedule pretty adamantly. And now I'm here trying to protect it. 
we have a set standard. We don't want to get to be Milwaukee where they're on a 200 year schedule to redo their roads and they're borrowing like crazy. And we've had the discussion and you fought the same fight I'm fighting now. If we go down that path, start opening that path up and go down there, uh, you don't want to be running ambulances down gravel roads. He's so, satisfied that you're staying on schedule. One year, one year. So if you don't want to let us keep up the pace, I'll make the statement right now and everybody that's sitting here will be sitting here next year. We can't do this every year. We go a mile behind every year. It doesn't take long and pretty soon we're on a 30, 40 year schedule. And we go down these roads and check them out on our tour and uh, they're not all super highways. There's roads that we're passing up that should be done. So just a, a word of warning, okay. and you understand that better than most. <laughs> okay. All right. Point made. Thank you, Susan. I just want to also commend all our other department heads who right. were playing nice with others and coming up with the cuts to make this work. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Valid point, and I agree with that. Very much so. Yes. Yeah, again, Ken and I will disagree. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I guess my part is that uh, all departments, I think, gave something up in order to make this budget work. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what like, you just said. Yeah, I, I know. I'm just saying that. And I guess the other uh, side is, and surely I don't know if you have the numbers handy, but uh, our health insurance has made a drastic turnaround too, which has really helped us out uh, as far as showing negative numbers for the last, I think, two plus years. We've been uh, actually adding adding to our reserve. Right, that is correct. And um, we have a very healthy reserve and therefore uh, the county is moving forward with a wellness program and some of those dollars in that reserve can be used for that project. And for that purpose, I should say, rather than a project. But I think I, I think just what the point I was making is that's that's a large item to the county with the number of employees that we have, and to what our costs relate to uh, providing that amount of health insurance. Correct. And I don't have the exact number um, before me, but 2015 there was no change in the um, health insurance rates. So therefore, that helped out your 2015 budget considerably. Another area is, uh, you brought this up, uh, Mr. Brand, is the, the, retire, our, the retirement rates went down this year. So be aware of the fact that we had uh, several good positive things happen that allowed us to keep 2015 as a cost to continue budget. We do not know what 2016 will bring. Ben? Actually, uh, Mr. Brand stole my question, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I did want to follow up on it and um, talk. I, I was hoping someone, surely uh, perhaps you could start and uh, maybe Kelly Hendy could, could follow up on the, uh, the impact of the, the wellness plan and how that's impacting our health insurance rates? Uh, right now, because that the health, actually Kelly is in the back there and maybe she can come forward and, and speak to that. But right now for 2015, that will be our first year and that will be the year that we'll be able to bring forward numbers. I, I guess I'm, I'm curious what's being done and um, and what objectives are looking to be achieved so that we can uh, help keep health insurance costs down. Good morning. Um, we most recently have put in place a wellness team and that consists of employees throughout the county and one of their initiatives just moving into 2015 is to have the health risk assessments and have an incentive there that if they receive a good score, that they will have a possible reduction in their premium. 
So that's, uh, they're in their very early stages. So this is um, just, you know, they've met, I think, three or four times. So going into 2015, we'll have more numbers and more ideas of what that program will provide for us. At, at this time, it's just too early to make any kind of comment at all because they have not hardly met at all. They're first starting. They're learning from other counties, other locations, coming up with options. The only real thing that exists today is the fact that we did bring back the uh, HRAs. Yep. Uh, and we are offering the ability to uh, discount the insurance rates that they pay if they have an award, you know, win a score that's reasonable. Uh, and then the other thing that you will see is in every one of the vending machines, there is a healthier choice in the vending machines. And we're seeing how that's going to work. Yep. But they've been around for less than two months. Give them an opportunity to accomplish something. I'm excited to see the outcome. Biz? <clears throat> yeah, I had the same, the same questions that we're talking about here on page nine. Uh, it's saying that uh, that uh, a forty-hour-a-week employee under the family plan is paying fifteen percent, and most of the employees are going through the health risk assessment, and they're being told that if, if they have a score of 70 or higher, that instead of paying 15%, they're going to pay 12.8. So then I look on page 15, and the first part is under Plan B for the Sheriff Department, and it's at 12.8 because they have their bargaining rights. Plan B, non-representative, it's showing family, 40-hour-a-week employees, are paying 15 percent. Well, I, I'm questioning those numbers when most of the employees are, are, have already probably had the assessment done. They're going to be paying 12.8, so that those figures aren't actually correct in here. Then, would they? They are correct as of this current time, and as Supervisor Enigo and perhaps Kelly, you want to come forward again and explain that. We don't have the numbers. We're going to be passing the budget. We don't know how many people took the HRAs, how many are going to qualify at the 70 um, percent. And thank you. So it's very difficult to put that number into the budget. But because we have a very healthy medical benefits fund balance, those dollar amounts will be absorbed within that fund. Okay, that answers my, my, my question because I thought, well, these numbers aren't going to be right because most of the employees are going to be, what we were told is most of the employees <clears throat> will be 70 plus and will, will qualify to get the 12.8 effective a month and a half from now. Correct. But you're saying there's money there that will absorb what the county has to pick up that that extra part of the, you know, you know, the percent. That is correct. Yeah, all of that is coming from the health insurance reserve. Mm -hmm. so Thank one of the you. few items we know we can take out of that area and benefit <clears throat> to the employees. You're answering my question. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? John. <clears throat> I'm sure all committees suffered pain here to get where we are, and I think a fine job was done. But the only concern I'm having is the open checkbook that EMS committee seems to receive, that's starting to concern me. 44% this year, I guess. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a concern. I don't know how it is the rest of you, but maybe we ought to look at that a little bit. Maybe they could abide like the rest of the committees do in a similar fashion. I don't want to speak for Joel, but I, I think when we all vote to add six new paramedics and add $560,000 to that budget, it doesn't take long to add up 40% increase. And that's been done with all of us for several months. You're looking at the six new paramedics, whether we want to do that or not. And it, it, it's not the end there because uh, we're also looking at a new building. Uh, some some structure of some kind to uh, 
to house the ambulances and the and the staffing. So I'm sure John would like us would like the EMS committee to take a closer look at that building cost, right, John? <laughs> My concern is, you know, it's 44 percent. I just want to echo John's concern too. It is a strange increase without. I mean, I know I understand some of its background, but I'll, when you just when a, a, a homeowner, a resident comes back and looks at 44 percent and doesn't understand why it's there. Susan, I'm a new EMS member, committee member, and I would agree that that that's a scary number. Um, a case was made to us for these needs. And so I voted for these, but I can't, I won't vote for this kind of stuff every year. I, I mean, I just, I think there is background and there are were reasons, but they can't keep happening. I would agree. And one more item based on yesterday's property committee meeting, it sounds like there might be six more in the fairly near future. Depending upon how we decide to build buildings. Mm -hmm. Is. Well, <clears throat> I think the case was made that when there is an emergency call for the paramedic stationed at Sturgeon Bay and they're out on the call, that quite frequently there's a second call. And there's no one to respond to it immediately. And I think the case was made that by hiring six more paramedics that we'd be able to handle the backup calls. Now I, and I said yesterday at that meeting, you know, it, what's boiling down to is how much can the taxpayers afford, but we're talking about human life, which is nothing more important than that. So if, if someone's having a heart attack and the ambulance is out on a call, we know every second or every minute is so important that we get to that person and yet if we don't hire these six paramedics I guess then that person that's that's having that heart attack is just gonna have to wait until the paramedics can get there and I don't know how clear I'm being but you know and I and I understand what they're talking about is we're talking adding uh, over a half a million dollars and it's not like a one-year thing it's going to go on for forever it's not like the bricks and mortar building the building and it gets paid for eventually we're talking about employees that 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 money is going to be there I think I even said at committee that all, all the money we saved under Act 10 removing the the bargaining for most of the employees in the county is kind of washed out now by hiring six more paramedics and Mr. Engel is, is right yesterday there was another scenario presented to us that if we had a small paramedic station south of the county a short way south of the county and one just north of the county you're talking down by the YN and by Carlsville uh, that would change the design of the building in Sturgeon Bay and it would require hiring even six more paramedics besides the ones we're talking about. So I think this was just something for everybody to think about and how much quality paramedic insurance do you want out there? And you know how much how much can can you know can we afford? It's I, I, I guess for the, if if you or your family member was having a heart attack It'd be pretty easy to say, yeah, let's hire, let's hire all these people so that we have them available to respond. So, I, I guess at this point, I, I am in favor of hiring the six, so that we do have the bat backup. And whether we can afford to hire in the future even six more, I, I, I guess that'll have to be debated. Ben, I was hoping that someone could recount the the history of EMS services and also the justification of why we run our own EMS service versus other counties that run a, a private service. 
I think that is, uh, would be good information for someone like myself who's not on the EMS committee to know. Um, I feel like I have, I have part of the story, but, uh, and I want to, to understand how we are justifying uh, the hiring of six new uh, paramedics. Gabby? Isn't part of that problem the geographic location that we are? Uh, most of these other counties are kind of in the middle of everything. We have nobody to share with. Dan? Well, we got the fair meeting at 11 o'clock and we got a lot of time. <laughs> and we have the <laughs> resident expert on this subject here, being Dan Williams, has been here for the last 25 years. Um, he could come forward and just from his history could give you a good synopsis of why we are where we're at. Since this is really a, an important discussion. Where's Dan? Dan? <laughs> come on forward. Come on up. Keep it under 70 minutes. You can do this by memory, I know, because you've had this many times. Do you want to come up to the podium? Well, Dan, yeah, yeah, cool. come to the podium. Yeah, come on, you can do it. <laughs> Tell them how this all evolved. I'm an easier target up here. Yep. Yeah. At least this way you don't get it, you know. We got time, so. Okay. Yeah. we got to be here till 11. Yeah, I can make this uh, five hours or I can make it 20 minutes. Um, the county established back in the 70s that it made sense to provide the service countywide um, and made a decision at that time to get into um, providing that service. Um, it's one of two counties that provides service on a countywide basis. Uh, there are uh, no counties that I am aware of, uh, maybe Douglas, um, that have a private service that covers their, their county. Uh, it's all, it's, if it's not municipal based, like we are, which is called a third service, because we're not fire, we're not um, law, we're just EMS. Um, if it's done by other municipal agencies like fire departments or standalone, I guess you could call them private agencies, but they're not private ambulance services. They're like organizations at the volunteer basis that provide that service. So that was the original um, concept back in, in, I think it was about 1970. <clears throat> the the decision to do that was was actually probably not even realized that it was a good decision at that time. It just made sense instead of putting an ambulance in all the little bergs and costing actually much more than than it would cost uh, today um, if you continue to do that model. Um, most counties that I'm aware of that are looking to make any changes in EMS are looking to do what we're doing, which is consolidate because a lot of places have the volunteer services. I think it's no secret that volunteerism is, is heading out the door. And, and you have services that are contracting, um, combining, doing whatever they can to stay alive. Um, but at some point, you get to a point where you can't stay alive anymore with volunteer services, and then you get to full-time people. It's just a, a fact of, of what's happening in many counties. Um, the last few years when I wasn't um, working for the county, I was doing a fair amount of consulting and I did a lot of consolidation plans. Um, and because of these services who just couldn't get an ambulance out the door anymore. So to just, to, to skip forward, um, you know, uh, to, to today, why we're asking for the six people, is we've had over 400 times this year where we could not respond to the second call. That's the troubling number. Um, that's me laying on the ground, you laying on the ground, and waiting for Sister Bay to get here, or the Brussels unit to get here, which is not staffed with paramedics. So it does, again, you're right, the decision is yours um, as far as uh, what you want to do with that. But I would say that I don't want to be the one who has to talk to those people and explain why we were not able to provide service to them. The other thing, one second, John, one more thing. Um, the other thing that I'd like to point out is, is that the budget was increased significantly this year because it was over $700,000 that should have been budgeted last year that wasn't. And I've got those facts and figures that I will be presenting to my committee tomorrow of what was budgeted, what should have been budgeted. And there was, there was a significant amount of, um, I don't know if the turmoil is the right word, but um, process that went on last year during the budget time where budget figures were not 
um, adequately or accurately um, brought forward, which put us in a situation where we have a significant shortfall in the budget because of the budget wasn't a proper budget. So that's part of the increase is because last year's budget was, was deflated. So this year's to make up to where we should be. So the, the jump isn't necessarily an all, all, it's all in one year, but it's because of what happened in 2014. So John, you had a... I had a, a question regarding your backup calls that you have a hard time getting to. Where, where does the personnel come from to do those backup calls when your first-hand rig is out on a call? Um, we hopefully, some of our off-duty people will hear that call come out and, and come in. Um, that happens most of the time, um, but we've had a couple of calls where we did have to wait for one of those ambulances from another station to come and take care of that patient. And in, in those cases, fortunately, the, the patient's condition wasn't severe. So we were able to, um, I guess, dodge the bullet, if you will. Um, but again, if you have somebody who's in cardiac arrest, you know, in this room, and our unit is out, um, you're here. You're, you're probably, but I can't do everything. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, they can do CPR, but um, but we need to get you know lots of other things that that uh, go on. But but that's what happens. It's either um, it, it's either we use our off-duty personnel. We've had a seasonal program in the summer for when we know we're going to be busier, and that's that has helped mm -hmm. with those numbers. But those numbers are there. Uh, they don't lie. And in fact. In, Stur in the Sturgeon Bay area, we're getting to the point now where uh, I, I think we're over 20 now that we've had the third call. So we're, you know, it's just, it's busy and it's going to, it's not going to change. Um, the aging population, the people who find that EMS is their easiest way into the healthcare system, if I call the ambulance, I get in the door, I get a bed right away, and I, whatever, if I haven't seen a doctor, they're going to fix me up and they're going to afford, you know, make arrangements for me to get to a doctor um, for a regular basis, and that's people's uh, entry into the healthcare system anymore. And again, not just here, that's happening all over the country. Dan? Yes. I would like to just uh, echo um, one of Dan's comments, and that is the fact in the past and before we had the net new construction, their budgets were set by a percentage. You could only go up a certain percent, and all departments adhere to that, and for the most part, there are some departments, and still today, that we need to be realistic. All departments can't adhere to what they're asked to do. And therefore, um, one department may be higher than they were in the previous year, but another department will help out and they're able to reduce their budget and to help those departments that can't. And that is exactly what happened this year. And to echo what Dan is saying, it we went over uh, his budget line by line and over a number of years, past five years. And it has not been budgeted realistically. I want to add too, as a newbie to this committee, that Dan has really tried not only to do that realistic budget this year, but to get billing under control so that revenues are now coming in at the rate they ought to be coming in, mm -hmm. which should help. The, and that hasn't been happening. Right. I, I think, you know, fiscally we're in a much better position from a department standpoint than we were this time last year, for sure. Go ahead. Yes. I'd like to know, when you answer a call, if it's not appropriate, you all can say no. No, we no. can't. Well, I've certainly had that happen. We don't have a choice in responding well, to, to the call. That, no, you come to the call, but you can, you know, in the assessment, you can say we don't, you know, you can go, but maybe you could go better by car. Um, I think that's one of the issues, though, is that, like you're talking about, that people think this is a quick way in. Right. And that that's an abuse of, of what it's intended for. That in the, when I do this every day, I call Paratran if it's not an urgent, uh, you know, I don't think the patient's going to pass or have some catastrophic event before they get there. I think that's one of the things maybe is better education for people to understand that there are other options to get to where they need to be. You know, I don't know how you do that, but 
I certainly, we do as a group of nurses, try not to abuse that system because we know uh, it's really, it's overwhelmed at times. Right, and, and you're right. I mean, we, we do tell people that there are, based on their condition, there may be a better way for them to get to the hospital uh -huh. rather than us. Um, you know, we're not the cheapest uh, ride, you no. know, th th and, and we, we all know that, but um, so if there's a reason that, that there's a medical reason to transport, we will transport <laughs> and, and suggest to the patient that we think that you'd be better off if we took you into the hospital. But we also will be happy to tell people that your condition right now is is not an emergency, uh -huh. and if you can take the paratran or um, if somebody's comfortable sure. taking you to the hospital, that can also take place. We've even done that and then followed the people to the hospital in case that condition changed. That's sure. the one advantage of being up near the hospital. Right. I think a lot of it, though, I think is education to that what you all do and and what the intent is of EMS that it's not just a transport service. It is an emergency situation where you need help then you know I I use it a lot I'm a frequent flyer <laughs> I mean I don't personally oh, I know. We know. but yeah. I do call for patients and so I, I do know I, but I've been fortunate I think I've only had one situation where they had to transport two people in the same ambulance and that was up in Gills Rock when I had a situation but they had a motorcycle accident, so they put them both together because of the lack of, that's probably been two or three years ago, so everybody got to ride together. Yeah, that's not ideal, but because it was well, Gills Rock, it, I'm sure that was the situation, a, though, right. they didn't have any choice to do right. it. But I think I agree, though, that you need the people. This is a very stressful <clears> job, and what they see and what they do is not simple at all. It's not, it's, if you've never been a part of that or seen what they, they answer to, it's not an easy job, and I think you need to have people, you need to have enough people to do the job and not overwork those who are currently there. Mr. Enigle. And I may have misunderstood the conversations in the past, but if I understand it correctly, to outfit one ambulance 24 hours a day takes six people. That's correct. correct. So that's what this intent is related right. to. It, it's to put one more okay. full-time ambulance in service. It takes six people to work a 24-hour schedule seven days a week, 24-7. Um, and the, the comment that was made about the discussion at property yesterday, I was answering a hypothetical question <laughs> that if you had the, if you were the king for the day, what would you do? That was not a proposal. That was not anything other than the answer of a hypothetical question. And I just want to make sure that that's out there as well because... However, I have been in this county long enough to know that that particular scenario has been brought up off and on through the years. I brought it, it up does, 25 it years does, ago. And it does make sense. Yes. And I did present it 25 years ago. I was wrong on my date. I, I forgot that I was gone for a few years. Um, so it was 25 years ago, actually, when I made that presentation <laughs> of those locations. Um, and, I, and I still believe I'm not wrong. Um, I think that that's at some point that's where it'll be. But it just, it just depends on what you want. Did I answer your questions appropriately, Mr. Meyer? Uh, or do yeah, you have more? I, I guess um, just to go back, and get, can you help me out to clarify <clears throat> the alternative back in the 70s of uh, running a countywide EMS service was one of the alternatives was to have municipalities be responsible for it. Right. Technically, by statute, the township is responsible to provide ambulance service. At, at that point in time, it was decided by the townships as well as the county um, to, it was, didn't make much sense for every township to create its own entity. Right. That it would be much better served if you created an entity that took care of the entire county. Especially because, again, the old geography of the county that we talk about frequently, it did, didn't make any sense at all to try, to try to do that any other way than with one service throughout the county. And as time has gone on, the volume has gone up. And then the only other alternative then is for either the county or municipalities to uh, contract for those services. That's correct. And because of our geo geography, that's not a you would, very realistic. I've been option. on that side of the fence as well, and you would never get a public and, or a private service to touch Door County with a 10-foot pole. Okay. It, again, and it's geography related. And they can't make any money. 400 plus times uh, second call was, was needed and an ambulance was not available with paramedics. Is that? That's correct. So oh, we're averaging over one a day. Yeah. 
Ah, okay. Um, I, I guess, you know, from, from where I sit, um, you know, and, uh, you know, we have a, an obligation to, to provide responsible services to our, uh, our constituents and the, and the people who visit to Door County. <coughs> um, yeah, this seems like a no brainer. We've got to, uh, we've got to have this second rig with the paramedics to, to staff it. Mrs. Schultz, you had a... I was just thinking, uh, it's kind of what Dan had, or Ben had just said. I know it's very, it's very, uh, they're multiplied in the summer when all the tourists are here. But they're also finding that it's bad enough in the, in the quiet times yeah. of the year. So right. that it's not necessarily just tourists. Yeah, there used to be a time when the calls dramatically dropped off this time of year. And in the northern part of the county, it drops off, not as dramatic as it used to. And then the city, it drops off a, a little bit, but not very much. The city stays pretty, it, the city and, and around stays pretty constant with the number of calls that we have. Mr. Verley. <clears throat> I don't claim to be a historian, but I was there when this thing happened. And I'll share with you a little bit of the history. <clears throat> Dan is correct. It was about right, right around 1970. The Door County Sheriff Department, well, before that, there was a Door County Traffic Department, and then the sheriff just ran the jail. But there was a, then the county board had a merger. But at that time, right around 1970, <coughs> the squad cars in Door County were station wagons with a gurney in the back. And at, especially auto accidents, people that were hurt were taken to the hospital by the sheriff deputy. There was no one in the back to take care of that person. If they were bleeding bad, they drove a little faster, is what, you know, what the auto deputies would say. But the breaking point was, and I'm not scolding them, but in the Door County Advocate it was printed that all of the funeral homes or mortuaries in Door County we're no longer going to transport live people, that heart attack victims and whatnot, that they, they would only be picking up people that, that were deceased. <clears throat> the sheriff at that time was Sheriff Bridenhagen, and he decided that we had to provide more than just the station wagons, and they purchased, the county purchased an Oldsmobile, and it was just people that had limited training, it was actually Fritz Brunswick who worked down at the shipyard as a medical person, that went out on ambulance calls. That's how it started, was when the mortuary said that they would no longer turn it. It was in the, if you research the advocate, you'll find out that when they printed that, the sheriff made the decision that we had to provide an ambulance in the county. And it wasn't too long after that, then the, the Sheriff Department got rid of the station wagons after that and had sedans. And it was right around 1970, Dan, that's correct, that's what had happened. That, I was there and that's the history of it, of how the ambulance thing got started in Door County. And the geographic location of the way we are again, that affects fire, police, rescue, schools and everything, that we, we don't have a neighboring county to run in and say, oh, we can go to that heart attack victim of being surrounded by water. It's it, it's just it's just our our geographic location, so that, you know that that's what happened back then. Mr. Gunlickson was next. I guess there's nothing that I can say that already hasn't been said by any supervisor, other than the fact that I'd like to emphasize on what Mr. Verley said early on, and that is, how do you put a price tag on a life? And one thing that hasn't been said here yet is that Dan, when you were hired, you knew you had a large task ahead of you to reevaluate the department and take it forward and I commend you on doing just that because your expert skills have decided that for this to move forward requires more staffing for the safety of the public of this great county we live in and it was not lightly taken by anybody at the committee and obviously here today about this increase but going back what price do you put on human life and I, I commend you and the committee for having fruitful conversations about this early on and getting to this point because it's here before us, and I support it 100%. Thank 
and you'll remember, I think, when I brought this to the committee the first time, I said, this is the last thing I wanted to bring to this committee. But it, it you know, again, you hired me to uh, look at things and, and, and make the right, the right decisions for the future. And when I started looking at numbers and finding all of these calls that we weren't able to respond to, I just say, you know, that I can't sleep at night when that is going on. Um, so you, you, know, you, you do have to make, I'm a taxpayer too. I don't want the taxes to go up. However, I also know that it's important to be able to take care of people in their time of need. You know, not, not just the health and safety of the public, but we also have to worry about or be concerned about the health and safety of our employees. These are men and women that go out on some very horrendous, very tough scenes that they have to deal with when they get off duty that they try to decompress. And if we're calling them back to service because of a backup call, we're not giving them that time to, to decompress and, and think about how things were or should have been or might have been. They're just jumping back into the fire. Uh, you know, we see it with the Iraq War veterans, Afghan veterans, everybody's going back a tenth time now. Mm -hmm. uh, they get burned out. You know, PTSD is a huge thing. It doesn't happen just in wartime, but it also happens in the civilian world as well. I think we have an obligation uh, as a county board, a as stewards of our county, uh, to also be aware of, of the situations that our employees are in. Mr. Osted. Well, I was just going to add to business. I think the first ambulance was uh, funded either fully or partially from a grant from Fort Howard. Yep, it was a there were Fort Howard funded and virtually that was the first every ambulance. ambulance. Now, how mm -hmm. many ambulances do we have in the county? Nine. So uh, um, you can see how it's growing from one to nine now. Right. Fort Howard funded almost every ambulance in Northeast <laughs> Wisconsin for okay. a period of time. I'm just curious. Do you have um, like the average response time from? back in when this transition was made, and we had one ambulance to now, when we have... Well, uh, boy, I don't, I'd be ha hazard a guess. I know our, our get out the door time right now is about a minute from the time the page comes out to the time we're rolling. Um, I can pretty much tell you that um, they probably took them that long to figure out who they were gonna call um, to go on the ambulance call before they even thought about coming to get out the door. Because it was all essentially volunteer. I think Fritz was the full-time person, but it takes more than one person to, to do the do the call. So um, I would say it, uh, it was it's significant. Yeah. Any other questions? Hopefully I explained to everybody's satisfaction why we're in the situation we are and I appreciate your consideration for for um, doing this thank you Dan Thanks. anybody else on budget David so as I understand it right now back to our fiber optic question unless we discuss it here it would go for borrowing no 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 because I want to make we sure people understand that no no we passed the new resolution today yeah. So we'll not just automatically we're discussing it again. It'll be discussed we'll at finance and be brought back to this body for deliberation. Right. Yeah. Right. David, what's the reason for such a, a large uh, surplus fund balance, and why aren't you using any of that? Why do you want to keep it at such a large amount? I guess I would say, and Shirley can certainly chime in, the fund balance changes, swings up and down throughout the year. Mm -hmm. We sometimes have got more of a fund balance, sometimes less of a fund balance. Each of the last two years, we have used a significant amount of that fund balance uh, within the budget uh, to cover off expenses on the operating side. This year, we chose not to do that um, based on what we know some projects are coming down line. We can't use them for operational purposes. It can only be used for CIP purposes or one-time expense purpose. And so the committee and the board in general up to this moment in time has let that uh, balance float uh, and use it as needed. I guess my yeah. my opinion was it's such a large fund balance, it's very easy to spend. Yes. Versus not having it and having to go look for it. Yeah, and as I stated before, is we have not closed out 2014, and that will not close until probably April after the audit. And Hypothetically, how much could it go down? <laughs> It could go down below the 15 percent. It just depends on how the um, expenditures come in, how the revenues come in or don't come in. And right now we don't have a crystal ball that we can tell you, you know, give you an estimate or guesstimate. And the 15 percent came from 
the 12 to 15 percent was a guideline that was approved by the county board not recently or uh, it was reaffirmed last year I believe right it was 2003 and uh, the county did not have an unassigned fund balance policy so at that time. right at that time and so one was drafted to give the county board supervisors an idea of where we were landing each year and the possibility of uses of that uh, fund balance and if there were going to be uses. And um, the, the Finance Committee also collaborated with the outside auditors correct. to determine what the percentage and what, what rate <coughs> we should be looking at. Um, and that's what that's what was originally established. We did reaffirm it last year. We brought it back to the board and reaffirmed the 12 to 15 percent. Joe. Just to elaborate on what he's asking, isn't there kind of been an unwritten rule of thumb that uh, one quarter of your year should be held in reserves for operating in case of an oh crap moment type thing? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. And we do the. That would be a big balance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It is, and that's yeah. why it is. The, the, yeah. the finance <coughs> committee does also review it on a quarterly basis to see if things should be uh, altered, changed. Okay. Just easy, yeah. easy to spend a big pot, I think. Well, we do have limitations on it. I just wanted to point out that auditors uh, like to see um, a 12 to 15 percent fund balance available. Is that is that true? That is true because your fund balance really determines if you need if you would need to go out and borrow. It's looked at by Standard and Poor's, by Moody's. This is where you get the. Um, better or good rates as far as when you do have the need to borrow. And they look to see how prudent you are in your year-to-year um, -year operations. John, I guess I would add, when we look at, the, when the Finance Committee looks at the fund balance, if we're looking for any projects or any capital or anything to use within the budget, we're only looking at the dollar amount that may be above the 15%. We're not looking at what's in the 12 to 15 percent, only what's above. So in this case, we'd only be looking at roughly it's about a million dollars at this point in time. Correct. 1.1. Right. The 1.1 is the only thing that the finance would consider for any <coughs> projects or if any requests came in. Kathy. Well, and also if, according to the resolution that we passed before, if we go to that number three, million mm -hmm. 248 was going to be taken out of that fund balance rather than borrowing, right? So it's not just going to sit there in the coffers, right? Correct. Correct. It could be used. It could be used, absolutely. <coughs> yes. Now, we ask all departments to stay within their budget, but let's not kid ourselves, especially the sheriff department and the highway shop. They do their best to stay within their budget but that's not always possible. Depending on the weather, depending on the amount of crime that could happen, <clears throat> they can go over budget. And that money has to come from somewhere because Door County pays their bills. <clears throat> now, if you have a really good year where crime is down, we don't have a lot of snow, they might return money to the undesignated fund or general fund. And if you do have crime and you do have bad weather, such as we did last year, they may have to come and ask for money because they're over budget. And that, especially those two departments, that can happen. And, and so the undesignated fund can grow if you're lucky and, and crime is down and weather is okay, but it can be the opposite way as well. Correct. Chuck? Yeah, I guess Biz just mentioned what I was going to say in another department I threw in there would be human services. We ask them to cut it right down to the bone uh, to their best estimate of what they might be able to get by with. But things can change so drastically in that as far as holding juveniles or uh, holding mental patients of different classifications that uh, several hundred thousand dollars is nothing to see add up. Anybody else? I guess the bottom line here is that the, the county is preparing for the unknown and they need to have resources for the unknown and who knows what the unknown is. If that's it, I'll turn it back to the chair. Thank you, everyone. Oh, sorry, Biz. Yeah, I have one. Are, we're still on the budget? Yes. Yep. 
<laughs> on another subject, I guess we're done with those things, but on another subject, I, I'm looking and I, I was wishing Eric would have been here this morning. I'm chairman of Airport and Parks. And on page uh, 92, I'm looking at the John Miles Park water line replacement of 75,000 was in there because of the, the leak out there and there's a line drawn through it. And I think the utilities has us on notice that we must repair that in 2015. And then when I go back to page 70, I see there's 123,000 in maintenance and stuff for the parks. And I'm, were those numbers moved around or you're maybe sure, you know what happened there? Yes, they were. Um, the dollar amount to do that repair was um, reduced considerably and therefore it went into the parks budget. <coughs> so it is within the budget, but at a much reduced. Because I know at our committee we decided that we could do some of the work in house, and right? we don't have, maybe yeah. have licensed plumbers and stuff. But we, but like we can dig the trenches, and you know we we have the equipment to to do some of that work, which reduced the cost. And I, I, I knew that it was still in the budget, but when I saw this seventy five thousand removed, and but then the hundred and twenty three thousand in the maintenance, I thought that they must have just moved the numbers around. Right, because it no longer qualified. Remember, our our uh, capital improvement yep. plan is fifty thousand and above okay and it I it was a lot less than um, the 74,000 that was originally thought okay well and I hope we don't find too many surprises when we actually get digging out there but I but it, but you know we've known they've known about this leak and they don't know exactly where it is so they're gonna they're gonna replace that whole line out there at that park so and hence this is a good example of why we should preserve and protect that unassigned fund balance. Yeah, absolutely, You're right. Thank you. Chuck? Yeah, I, I think that figure came down to 33,500 to, right. to replace that line. Yeah, I wanted to say 37,500, but you know, not having the numbers before me, I, I knew it was considerably less. Yeah, underneath there it's showing project removed by department 33,000 even is what it says here on page uh, 92. Um, that was another project that was moved. Was was that not the um, Cape oh, Point? Cape Point parking. Yeah, that was oh, part the of it. The was new, another parking lot at Cave Point. Yes, and so I, I believe there's 32,000 in 2015 budget and then 33,000 was moved out to 2016. I mean it's still in the KIP, yeah. but it's in a different <clears throat> year. Well, and, and, and that's one of our important parks and where we do get a lot of people and, and we're, we're going to need another parking lot there eventually. So the tour buses that come in there and, and, and all the vehicles that are parked there, <clears throat> excuse me, except in July and in August, especially, uh, you know, there's not enough parking in that in that particular park. And Eric moved it because it was a, a timing issue of when it was going to be started, when it was going to be completed, and and um, really looked at it and felt that this would be a better way to go. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? And I guess um, I notice our highway commissioner is here. And I was wondering if uh, he could come forward and talk about the uh, road projects that are scheduled for 2015, and if any of them include bike lane and or other uh, improvements. John, please. Is Mr. Kaloji going to give us the bare facts? <laughs> <laughs> Just Cutler to the chase. Just Cutler to the chase. <laughs> See, now he's not going to come up front there. I don't have that list directly in front of me. I think I'll get started before I get more cracks at uh, my alumni here, I guess. But um, I, I'm sorry, I don't have my, my list right in front of me. But uh, 
I, I think what you're looking at, and the question is related to, are we adding additional or, uh, shoulders or widened shoulders on projects? And, and yes, we are. Um, and I think there's two, particularly County Highway F in Northern Door County and uh, um, on County Highway PD as well. Those are two that I'm very familiar with that we'll be adding three foot wide paved shoulders. And we're not calling them bicycle lanes because they're not truly bicycle lanes, but uh, that is consistent with the uh, policy that we've established by making sure that we have uh, those type of services available for uh, safety for people who are out there on the roadways with either bicyclists or other type of transportation other than vehicles, so, okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Th I just want to say thank you. Um, I think uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and try to speak on behalf of the bicyclists that, uh, that use those particular roads that uh, that will be a great improvement and I know there will be more improvements to come in the future. Thank you, John. Okay, thank you. Any other subjects? Okay, we'll try to turn it back to Dan one more time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right, John. He does. He's the next chair anyway. He's the next chair. Oh, I love it. Tried to keep the show going. <laughs> He calls and checks on me. I'm very, very <coughs> afraid. We have to take attendance when we reconvene. One of the few. What? Uh, I'd like to make a, have a motion made to reconvene in the county board and act on the budget. Motion by Don City, seconded by <coughs> Ben Meyer. All in favor, say aye. 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 Um, next on the agenda is the, and he's just getting the figures right now. It'll take a couple of minutes to make a, a motion for the figures for the budget. So just a minute's delay. Are we allowed to go to the bathroom? Not yet. Just for your information, while we're sitting here, the hypo critical question that was asked was asked by me and I asked Dan Williams if you were to redesign the EMS location of the ambulances in Dark County how would he do it and he gave an answer and he'll probably give the same answer at the EMS <laughs> committee tomorrow and the reason I asked that question is as we go down the line here building a new ambulance garage we should go and look at all options and see what they are and discuss them and we got our time with, uh, I'm assuming it's going to pass the budget. The ambulance garage right now is sufficient for the time being to house the new paramedics. It's not perfect, it's not good, but it, it works so we don't have to rush out and build an ambulance garage in the next 60 days to house the people that I, I assume we're going to pass here. So uh, there's time, so and I said there's time to discuss it and come up with all the options. David's going to make the motion here in a couple of seconds. Give me a moment. Go ahead, Ben. He's busy. How are you doing? Mr. Chairman, maybe now is a good time to um, bring up the fact that uh, our um, mission statement and goals were set up uh, uh, in 2010. In 2015, it will be five years, and perhaps then you know, just the coming year would be a good time to reevaluate, revisit those uh, uh, that mission statement and. We can put that on the budget for next month and ask if we want to do it. We don't have that on the budget right now. I mean, on the agenda right now. So we'll put it on the agenda. Jill's going to write a note right now to remind us. <laughs> Excellent. So you got it, David? I'm ready. ready. Okay, David's going to make a motion. Uh, fill the blanks in. Okay, I make a motion that we approve resolution number 2014 89, which is the 2015 budget and tax levy. For the total expense line. Is seventy four million one hundred ninety six thousand seventy two dollars. The revenue line is forty seven million eight hundred ninety thousand seven hundred seventy eight dollars. The levy is twenty six million three hundred five thousand two hundred ninety four dollars. Leaves a tax rate of three point eight one eight zero four four eight zero three. Per thousand of equalized value. You got it? Yeah. Can you repeat the three? The three? 
Is there a second? I'll, I'll second that. Second by Chuck. Okay. Go ahead, it, Chuck. It, it's just figure right here. Is that the one that says that we're going up to about 16 cents per thousand? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Is there any questions or <clears throat> anything else? Could, Biff? Yeah. Would you please repeat the county tax levy? Uh, the levy dollar here? amount? Sure. 26305. Two nine four. Thank you. Is there any other questions? If not, we're going to go to the voter board and vote yes or no. Wait. Can we round it? <laughs> <laughs> What's the tenth test? What's that? <laughs> that has passed on a vote of twenty yes. And one absent. And I'd like to thank Shirley and her staff. Shirley, I'm thanking you. <laughs> and all the department heads. And I guess I said this last year, if uh, your intent is to shrink government or stop government or to add to government, the budget procedure starts tomorrow, I think. <laughs> so, uh, and th it's good to work through it the whole year instead of the last hour. But the discussion we had today was very, very good under the circumstances, very good. And it uh, really went really smooth. So <coughs> budget starts tomorrow for 2016. Um, we're going to um, recess now till 11. No, wait, no, wait, no, one, one more resolution. More. I got one more. Wisconsin land information. David, do you want to make a motion on that and tell us what it's all about? Yes, I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2014-90, Wisconsin land information, WLIP. Grants in aid to local government. Is there a second? Second, second by Dick Haynes. Uh, as you know, we required anything over $1,000 to get county board approval. Uh, this is a grant, an annual application for a grant for monies from the state of Wisconsin to work on land information. Uh, that would be Tom Hayes' department. Um, in this case, it includes uh, aerial photography and a $1,000 grant for um, education. I don't think Tom is there. I was hoping you wouldn't be anything else. Anybody got any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, that is passed. <coughs> now we're going to recess to 11 o'clock for the fair meeting. That's it. Yeah. 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 I would like to call the meeting of the Dark County Fair Association to order. Um, we have an approval of the agenda from anyone. There we go. Oh, okay. All right. Then. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. A motion by Chuck Brand. Second by not John. Um, <laughs> David Eagle. <laughs> I always get that wrong. That's actually quite polite, though, if you're talking okay. about my father. I know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. All in favor? Or Aye. any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, the presentation of the annual report. Oh, sorry. Okay. Second okay. is the minutes of the 2013. Move to approve. <laughs> second. Who was the second? Oh, okay. Okay, uh, presentation of the annual report. Steve Jenner, John, our treasurer will go over the financial report. It's also written in your packets. Okay, for the year, um, we ended up with about a $15,400 loss. Our reserves over the last three years have gone from 79,000 in 2012 year ending to 67,000 and at the end of 2014, 51,000. For the most part, we had good fair weather days. We have just, I think, in many cases, tapped out what we can provide. And um, we, we had a very good Saturday. We had almost $40,000 worth of receipts. But then come Sunday, which was uh, a, good, a good weather day, ended up with about $8,000 worth of receipts. So just a very um, inconsistent fair attendance throughout. But again, good weather days. Any questions on the, on the statement on net assets? Then we would go into the income statement. We'll just do a, a general overview. 
um, over the last three years. The revenues have increased from about 147,000 in 2012 to 158,000, 2013 to 162,000 in 2014. The, the main ingredient causing those increases are, are primarily our gate receipts. We've been basically offering a uh, one pay pass in which it allows the um, recipient to attend the fair through the gate, also use it for purposes of um, carnival participation and or um, grandstand attendance. So those, thing, um, those pieces have been good. It, it brings in people. Um, so I think that's enough said on that. On the expenditure side, 172,000 in 2012, 167,000 in 2013, and 177,000 in 2014. Um, over the last three years, we've gone pretty much from a grandstand-oriented um, fair, um, where we had motorized events and the like, to a free band and, and entertainment show with On the Midway that was acceptable and accepted by all. Um, this past year, we spent roughly about $25,000 in free entertainment. It seems to attract people to the fair, again, um, and then they're using it for other sources of, of uh, we're using it for other sources of seeing the exhibits throughout the fair and, you know, being participating within the fair. Uh, this last year, we did have a, another grandstand event that, um, on Sunday, which was, which impacted us on the um, utilities expense. We had to set up for a kind of like a, a modified enduro race. So we ended up having to pay some additional electrician and utility cost out there. As you can see, we jumped in about, jumped on cost from about 6,700, 6,800 in utilities cost to about 9,300 this past year. A lot of that has to do with electrician's cost and other things to gear up for that event. And then back to the special acts and features. Um, the last two years, 2012 and 13, 81,000. In 2012 and 13 for expenditures, that went up to about 92,000 in 2014. That's the culmination of, uh, again, the free entertainment that we offer on the grounds, in addition to some grandstand act that we added this past year. Again, when we look at overall results, um, the last three years, $22,000 worth of loss for cash outflows in 2012, 9,100 in 2013, and 15,000 in uh, 2014. <clears throat> Any questions on financials? The next pages just kind of show the expenditures throughout the fair. And they're pretty much, they're grouped in by category of type of expenditure. So if you look at the left hand side, you'd have a GL account that would be 1100. That would be our administrative type expenses. All the way down to 2600. You jump into those areas, those are kind of like our special acts features and, and, and the like. Again, pretty much consistent year to year, except that we did see an increase or a spike up in utility cost and a spike up because of the free entertainment with respect to special acts and features. Now we also um, indicate our Revenue throughout the fair, again, as indicated, we had pretty consistent uh, fair dates throughout, except Sunday was, even in spite of the good weather, just really um, um, kind of di disappointing and, and um, distressing the fact that we only brought in roughly about seventy-five, seventy-six hundred dollars worth of receipts that particular day. Hmm. And that would be it for my part of the financials. Any questions? on the financial portion. Hearing none, we will go on to uh, the next report is the Depart Department Premium Report, which is found in your packet also. Um, it's a two-year comparison, and um, our premiums, the amount we're paying out has gone down. I would say one of the biggest concerns again this year is with the early fare, and the cold spring, the growing season for crops was quite low. If anyone got to the fair and went into the um, crops vegetable part of the building, it was pretty slack. Mm -hmm. um, the flowers 
fortunately did well, so that filled up the building. But again, we're losing quite a bit of entries in the um, crops building. As far as the other things, our animals are still up and good. Um, a lot of interest in school exhibits. We're getting more interest in school exhibits. We do send a notice out to schools asking them to save kids' projects during the year. So that's been coming out at the fair so kids get another recognition for work they've done. Any questions on the departmental reports? Yes? Because of the um, weather situation, are you uh, thinking about changing your dates for uh, next year? Uh, not for 215, but for 216. We are going further into August. But for 215, it will be July 29th, 29th. through August 2nd. 2nd, basically the same time frame. Hopefully, we'll have a little warmer spring than we had this year. Any particular reason why you wouldn't change it next year? Why we're not changing it for next year? Yeah. Because of the contract with the carnival again. We, we had to go to a different carnival this last year, and now the carnival that we're with for 2015 would still be the early date, but for 2016 we have slotted the later date in August. Any other questions? Okay, then um, we don't have a vice president or a president here today. I really have no other comments for the fair. I thought it went well. Um, I'm sure the dollar sign doesn't look good to you, but I'm more involved with the kids at the fair, and, and I enjoy doing that, and I think it's going quite well for them. They do appreciate having the fair for the exhibit part for the uh, other events that are held there. Okay. A uh, question. Oh, Chuck. Yeah, I, I, I guess I just wanted to bring up that uh, it, it, it's interesting that you people worked with that study committee this last year to come up with new ideas and avenues to try to generate more revenue for the fair. Uh, and having tried those, I, I, I guess it was interesting to hear that. I, it seems like no matter what we do, uh, there's only between 10 and 12,000 people that plan on attending the fair. It's, it's historically been between those numbers, and uh, you had a professional organization go out and do your marketing, and uh, that was one of the suggestions from that study group, uh, and it still worked out to about the same number of people. Yep, that's correct. <coughs> yep, no matter what we do, we, you know, we've been trying to do a much better job of, of dealing with the northern part of Door County. Just cannot make any inroads up there. We've um, had a marketing group that's done, we've dealt with for the last two years. They've done a, a lot of things in terms of bringing us media and the electronic side of the business, you know, with Facebook and the internet type web pages, and en enhancing that. Our billboard signage, um, you know, as we approach Sturgeon Bay, uh, we've been able to contain some of those costs and get out to a bigger audience. But again, the, the, the take on that has just been that we get the same pretty much level of attendance year in, year out. So it's kind of disappointing from that regard. Any other questions or comments? If not, um, the proposed dates for 2015, as I said, were July 29th through August 2nd. Is, do we need a motion and second on that? I think so, yes. I thought Dan Austin last year proposed that we were okay for two years. Where is Dan sit? Way in the back. Dan, was that not your comment last year that we were okay for two years or one year? I don't recall. Let me check those minutes check from last minutes, year. We'll find out. <laughs> somebody took the minutes. It yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> it would be V right here. Okay. He set forth a resolution establishing the dates for 2014 to 2017, so I guess yeah. we're okay. We don't need a motion on that, is that correct then, Grant, if that was right. in the res Okay. Uh, the next thing we have is the nomination of officers. I will read you the <coughs> proposed slate. Thad Ash, President. Tim Ash, and Vice President and Sponsorships. Steve Jennerjohn, Treasurer. Secretary Donna Henderson. Track manager in Midway Music, Tom Ash. The grounds, John White and uh, Don Vandervoort, 
serves as our educational liaison with the Door County Extension Office. Are there any nominations from the floor for yes? Madam Chairman, I'll just make a motion to accept that slate of candidates and uh, move that uh, all, for, all other nominations are closed. I'll second. David? Okay, I have a motion and a second to accept the candidates and close the nominations. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, those will be your officers. Now, any other questions and answer? Or we'll provide the answers, hopefully. <laughs> any other questions? Yes. To go back to talking about the carnival, am I remembering right that you almost have to book the carnival company like immediately Several, after the yeah. last fair? So right. by the time we get here in November, if it wasn't booked, you're in trouble. Right, yeah. that's correct. That's correct. Are there any other questions? If not, I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The meeting is adjourned. Thank you for your patience with me. Uh, we'll reconvene at the county board. Um, the next county board meeting is December 16th at 9:30. Joel, is that good enough for you? 9:30, okay? I'll do my best to be here. You want a little? You want a 10 o'clock or? It's been advertised at 9:30 for Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, the 19th is that what he said? Anybody got any questions? 16th at 9:30. Motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Second, Fisher. Mr. Which one you want, Chuck or Biz? Whoever got the hand up. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Who got Chair? the hand up for Biz or Chuck? Chuck. Chuck. Biz. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye.